Today XPG released their new power supply in the Core Reactor series and this one goes with a kind of special name and I'll get to that point later on. Basically, today we're going to talk about XPG Core Reactor 2 VE and uh, this uh, VE stands for Value Addition. Now, since it's an overview and the actual equipment for testing out the power supply is above around 30k, I think something like that. That's still a bit uh, further down the road when we're talking about the channel and everything else. But overview to give you some ideas about new power supplies on the market and to give you uh, some insights. Let's put it this way, insights and first impressions uh, on what you could expect from this type of power supplies. So the Core Reactor 2 VE starts with 550 and then we go 650, 750 and 850 watts with fully modular design for the cables and the 12V uh, 2x6 cable uh, comes only on models from 650 to 850, which is kind of logical, right? As I stated, fully modular design, you can connect the cables that you only need and this is really good because it helps you with the cable management inside your case but you already know that and I don't have to discuss that any further. When we're talking about the size, now this is quite interesting. Uh, first of all, we're talking about, let's let's put it this way, this is 850 watts, right? And usually what you get when we're talking about the ATX power supply, the size is up to 15 centimeters. I would say approximately 15 centimeters. Eventually you would get 16, 14 to 16. This one is actually 14 centimeters of length and it's outstanding because it's quite compact and it kind of gives you more space when we're talking about cable management. Now, why am I mentioning this before going into specs and we'll get to that part later on quite shortly. The thing with this power supply and the 14 centimeters, you get additional space in the power supply shroud compartment for tucking those cables uh, nicely beneath it and rearranging them properly. Now, since I'm at the cables and cable management, let's take, for example, the 24 pin, right? Uh, all cables are actually the same, including the 12 VHPWR, which also has the same design and configuration where we're talking, not the cable and the pin connectors and stuff like that, right? I'm talking about the actual design. We have black cables, all of them flat design and very, very flexible. So you might think, okay, this is 24 pin. It was from the start, from the get go. It was always like this. You could basically hang on it and <laughs> nothing will happen. So here is the tw uh, 12V uh, two times six cable, okay? So it has the indication uh, 600 watts on each connector. One goes to the power supply, one goes directly to your GPU. So you don't have to use those hideous extenders that are so stupidly designed without uh, having a possibility to actually hide those extensions to eight, uh, eight pin uh, PCI Express uh, cables. Regardless of that, flexibility, check this out. So you can bend it quite much, much sooner than on usual power supplies or an actual cable that comes from your GPU. You don't have to bend it like insanely with 90 degrees right from the connector, but you don't have to have 3.5 centimeters as far as I noticed, as far as I tested. So this is quite cool and uh, the design is really nicely done because I've seen loads of these cables and none of them uh, look uh, such so impressive, let's put it this way. But let's check out the specs. So the VE designation signifies uh, its aim to provide you guys, um, let's say a high cost to performance ratio. So you get lower price, but you get quite nice, uh, let's say performance and all the features that it has. It supports latest uh, Intel ATX 3.1 design guideline and it's compatible with NVIDIA 40 series graphic cards. It's 80 plus gold certified. And the cool thing about the packaging is that when you take a look at the box, what you can see is the power supply fan curve and the power supply efficiency. Now here you can compare the fan speed to the load and efficiency to the load. And at the back you have all the necessary information regarding the cables, the modularity, the size of the power supply, and of course, some other specs that might be quite interesting or just give you some more insights and information about the power supply. Apart from the ATX 3.1, it has the support for PCIe Gen 5, up to 91.01 efficiency with 80 plus uh, gold certified. We have silent DC fan, which has fluid dynamic bearing, 
And inside the package, you get uh, standard XPG Mira stickers, you get quick start guide, power supply, of course, logical, and you get the cables. You get the power cable from your power supply to the wall socket. You get 24 pin cable, one, one of it, of course. You get 12V uh, 2x6 cable as well. Then we have two EPS cables. Three PCIe 6 plus 2 pin cables and uh, two SATA cables, which they kind of daisy, ch let's put it this way, daisy chain into one cable, daisy chains into three SATA and one Molex. Now, comparing the XPG Reactor 2V to the standard version Core Reactor 2 is that uh, the Core Reactor 2 operates at 50 degrees Celsius, where the VE edition functions at 40 degrees Celsius, which is of course, quite uh, outstanding to have lower thermals in the power supply, which powers up your PC. The second difference is with the capacitor. So the Core Reactor 2 has 100% Japanese 105 Celsius grade capacitors, while the VE edition has 100% Taiwanese heavy duty 105 Celsius uh, grade capacitors. Now the Core Reactor 2 achieves less than 20 MV at plus 12 volts, plus 5 volts and plus 3.3 volts. In contrast where the VE edition, so the Core Reactor 2 VE, achieves less than 60 MV at plus 12 volts, uh, less than 40 MV at uh, plus 5 volts and less than 40 MV at uh, plus 3.3 volts. Both models, so the Core Reactor 2 and the Core Reactor 2 VE, both exceed Intel's specifications. For the Core Reactor 2, hold-up time exceeds 20 milliseconds, while for the VE edition, it surpasses 15 milliseconds. So basically, they both outperform Intel specifications at 16 milliseconds hold-up time. So basically, with all the specs that I gave you and all the, let's say, they did some internal testings, which unfortunately I can't do, and this is why I wanted to uh, give them to you so you could actually have some more insights about the power supply, because uh, as for proper testing of the power supply, you really need to have some insane equipment. And unfortunately, at this point, I can't have those because, first of all, you do have to have some special equipment to get the 80 plus uh, results and to check everything that uh, they uh, certified. And then we have the cybernetics where they have completely different uh, way of approach when we're talking about uh, certification and uh, how to test uh, the power supply. So, all in all, I would say checking out everything all together it's quite solid power supply i can't say properly like solid when i do an actual benchmark on i don't know coolers cases and everything else but regarding the specs and everything i mean this is maybe the first power supply that i encountered in a while that actually has taiwanese capacitors so that's a bit of a different and the compactness when we're talking about small chassis it's quite um, um, approachable when we're talking about that now regarding the power supply there will be additional build when we're talking about the power supply and the case and another cool thing which well another cool product which you'll see in that video quite shortly in the next uh, coming week and uh, that would be uh, well quite interesting because there will be a period of um, let's say a time-lapse video and then you'll have a complete video with uh, some insights uh, when we're talking about uh, more additional thermals and stuff like that so yeah that's it for today guys thank you for watching if you're curious about this power supply if you want to learn more or if you just want to check the prices because these these really are quite nicely priced uh, i think the 850 is around 130 dollars and then for the lower wattages you just go lower by the price i think the 750 watts is 120 something like that right but you can check everything in the description below because i'll place the links for each of those power supplies and finally if you want to check out that time lapse plus review video uh, next week don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it that's it for today guys thanks for watching see you quite shortly bye bye